Welcome. Welcome to this session on um, next steps uh, in socioeconomic data interoperability. Uh, interoperability. Um, uh, this is a live session. It has not been pre-recorded, so uh, this allows us to uh, uh, to have a little bit of interaction. Um, uh, what are we going to talk uh, talk about uh, today in this session? Um, we will we will go into data interoperability, obviously, because that's the the key topic uh, on this. Um, but it's also a call to action. Um, you know, a first step in order to really make this happen, because we've been talking about socioeconomic data interoperability for a long, long time. And we've been taking baby steps in uh, in the right direction, but we we never seem to get to the point where we really make it make it happen. So let me give a little bit of a context uh, a context here. Um, we need to combine data to address emerging and pressing questions on agri food systems. A really uh, important. Um, example is the COVID-19 crisis we're facing now, which can lead to uh, global food crises. Uh, and in some places, it, it, is, it has manifested itself already or is going to manifest itself. So where is the data that we need, uh, need to do this kind of analysis to, find, uh, to be able to address some of these, pre uh, these pressing issues? Uh, that data is everywhere. Uh, so we can start looking for, uh, looking for it and we can find it in all kinds of places. Uh, a lot of open sources are there which provide us with lots of different uh, uh, data, but it's a lot of data. It's everywhere. It's a big data deluge. So um, how can we make all that data talk to each other? Um, this is through uh, having good and rich metadata, which describes the data, not just the descriptive metadata, but also the structural, uh, structural metadata. The data that describes the data, uh, the, uh, the, the, that describes the data inside the data files that we want to use, um, and ideally in a machine readable way. So is there metadata already available? for these uh, for uh, for these data files yes there is and it's in all kinds of different forms again it is a data deluge in this case a metadata deluge um, so we've been working on these kind of uh, these kind of issues already within the community of practice on socioeconomic data and some of you may have or may have been to um, the pre-convention um, um, uh, event where we discussed uh, where, where we discussed the uh, the state of affairs or around Romis uh, Seant, uh, the socioeconomic ontology, and OIMS, the um, uh, the metadata schema that we've been developing uh, to uh, to tag data with really rich metadata. Um, so this is the, the building blocks are there. There's lots of building blocks. But um, it's not enough. So one of the way, uh, one of the things that is really um, uh, on the forefront, and and you've heard a lot about it uh, over the, the the past day already, and in the pre uh, pre convention events, uh, and you will hear more about this uh, over over the uh, over uh, today and tomorrow is ontologies. Ontologies. Um, as a basis for for making data uh, data interoperable, um, uh, uh, but it is not really enough. So um, ontologies provide uh, the conceptual framework of uh, of the information uh, that we have uh, that we have in our data, um, but that conceptual information can have lots of different forms. And those four, uh, those uh, for, uh, uh, let me give you an example. That that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, so uh, suppose you're you you're looking at uh, uh, at a, cro a crops being grown, yeah? crops being grown on fields with farmers. That's a concept. Um, now um, uh, knowing that okay, there is crops being grown. That's not what you're interested in. 
What you're interested in is knowing exactly what crop it is. And, uh, and so you can get into a, situ uh, a thing where you have lots of different ways of, uh, of, naming, uh, of naming what a crop is. It can be something as broad as cereals or roots um, or fruits and vegetables. Uh, or go or down into uh, uh, I, I, into more granular th things where you say, okay, it's not cereals, um, it's wheat and barley and maize and other cereals. Um, uh, or you can go down into the way where you go all the way to to the varieties of the different uh, of the different uh, uh, the different cereals. Um, but even then, you can have these kind of cla this classification can be in English or in French or in Spanish. And so you get this wide range of different things which all are related to that same concept of crops being grown in farmers' fields. That is what you find in all these different data, uh, all these different data sets. And it's not just the crops, it's, it, it, it's the geographic, um, uh, specification of where something is uh, in a country, uh, in a country, uh, and how is that country uh, that country called, or is it a, or is it a province, uh, or whatever? So there is a wide range of uh, of issues, and for every concept that you can think of, there is a way of classifying the information that goes into that uh, that concept. So. You have these multiple overlaying classifications that can coexist. And um, the key to interoperability is mapping these kinds of classifications. So let me give you a kind of a, a, case, a, a case study. Um, suppose you want to know what the nutritional status is uh, um, uh, of, the, of, uh, of an uh, average diet in low income countries. So, you would need data on apparent consumption in specific countries, and you would need data on nutritional characteristics of diet components. And this is a fairly, uh, a, a fairly simple, fairly straightforward uh, um, uh, uh, example. So look at the, da you, the, the data sources. For uh, apparent consumption, you can go to the FAO. Um, there is, uh, within uh, this, the statistics there, you can uh, you can check uh, select an indicator. You find the the new food balances, and you can choose your data. You can download that data. You can download the definitions and stand, uh, standards, and you can look at the overall metadata of uh, uh, of the data uh, of this uh, of this data. So this is really rich data data in terms of. Uh, the data and uh, the way that, that that data is is managed. So let's have a look at that data. So when we download it, we get this big bulk of uh, of information. In this case, in a CSV uh, CSV file, and if that's the way that I uh, that I downloaded it. And yeah, this is the information. But you know what we want to do with it? We really need to do a lot of stuff in order to make that usable for what we want to use it for. Uh, uh, so we really need to understand what is inside that data. So that's where the definitions and standards uh, come in. Uh, it explains what the codes mean, uh, their descriptions, their units, etc. Uh, so this is really, really useful. Um, and the descriptive metadata, as I said, uh, of the data set itself. So um, oh, let me go back. So if we, uh, we want to know something about uh, the the, uh, the, we wanted this for certain poor, uh, uh, low income countries. So we need national level income data in order to do this. So we go to the, we can go to the World Bank, um, uh, World Bank indicators and identify what with the data. Again, here we can download that, we can download that data, we can download, we can see the metadata, uh, the metadata. And uh, we can, uh, if we look at the data, again, we have a Big bunch of numbers. Uh, this time, organized in a different uh, in a different way, but it all contains information that we would like to that we would like to uh, like to use. Um, so here we have country and region definitions for um, 
uh, for, uh, for, for the different countries with their specific codes, which are different from the ones that are being used by FA, uh, FAO, which contains the apparent consumption data that we want to use. But they do have an income group. Uh, ca category, so we can find uh, the low, uh, our lower, uh, our low, uh, our low, in uh, lower, uh, uh, low income uh, country uh, uh, countries here, and so this is uh, something that we need. We also need nutrition data. We need data on the nutritional value. Unfortunately, there is not one for the whole, uh, a consistent one for the whole world. So we use, uh, uh, as a proxy, we use the one from the USDA, which is an extremely complete data, uh, data set on nutritional, uh, the nutritional uh, composition of many, many, many food, uh, food, uh, food items. Uh, obviously, there will be a little bit of a bias in there relative to uh, to other uh, to other countries, but yeah, we will. It's it's the best that we have right now. Um, that again here, where there is a lot of data which we can uh, we can download, uh, and in this case, we have data uh, both on the data it's, uh, itself as well as the description of all the different codes that are uh, that are being used in terms of the foodstuffs as well as uh, as the nutrients that are uh, that are being used so going back to this notion of classifications um classifications as i said are linked to concepts and so the concepts that we have here, uh, that we have here are nutrients there are countries there are regions and there's food items. As I said, it's a really simple example. Uh, and we have some development, uh, development indicators uh, related to that, so we can get to, get to, the, to, uh, uh, to the poor, the, the poor, poor countries. Now, if we look at, for instance, a concept, a concept like, uh, country, uh, like countries, uh, then we have the elements uh, of individual uh, of indi uh, individual countries like Afghanistan, Kenya, in, uh, and uh, and the USA, uh, and the concept nutrients, the elements within that concept are things like zinc, protein, calories. Uh, there's a lot more, obviously. Like there is more countries, there's a lot more uh, individual nutrients um, or uh, or nutrient components that you uh, that we can consider. The classifications linked to that. Uh, are, uh, are different. So we have, in terms of uh, the classifications for the countries, we have the World Bank and the FAO uh, classifications that we are using, uh, using in this context of this example. If we look at the classifications um, that, we, uh, that we have in our nutrient uh, inf uh, information, we have the, the FAO food balance sheets, which have um, calories, um, uh, 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 fat and protein uh, in there, as well as the USA, uh, USDA nutrient database for, for standard reference, which has a whole wide range of nutrients, including calories, uh, uh, total, uh, uh, total protein, and, uh, and total fat. And so that means that we have something that we can use to, to make a kind of a comparison and a check uh, against the data in it that we have in the FA uh, in the FAO data set and the information that we get from uh, the USDA nutrient database which is linked to a standard a, a standard portion but it, it is biased towards the uh, the US um, so we can create the interoperability between the data sets by mapping the elements of different classifications link, uh, linked to a single concept uh, this uh, so this means we get uh, a derived data a derived data set uh, based on the original data and the 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 mapped uh, the mapped data linking it to a a key uh, the a, a key classification that we want to use for our particular purpose. So we have the data the data files. Uh, and we need to convert the data into standard formats that can be easily converted into other formats, uh, something like a CSV file, for instance, or a GDX file, a, a data file which is easily uh, uh, transformable. 
we need to map the classifications, uh, the different classifications that we have. For instance, the classifications, uh, the, the different classifications for countries, mapping the, the FAO uh, countries to the World Bank countries uh, in this case. Uh, and um, in other examples, it would be a different kind of a class, a classification, uh, classification that we would want to map. And we need to provide the metadata about the data in a structured machine, re uh, machine readable, uh, readable way. Now, providing the, the metadata about this uh, is really uh, the key to being able to share this in a way that people know what, what, you're, ta what, you're, ta uh, what you're talking about. But right now, in order to make that, 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 that interoperability, we really need to look at that first step, uh, those first steps, uh, converting the data into a sta in standard formats that can be easily converted into other formats and to map the, cla uh, the, cla uh, the, classific uh, the classifications. Where applicable, we can add ontology terms in the, ma uh, in the, uh, uh, in the metadata. And we can provide the metadata about the metadata schema that we're using. So, if, as I said before, um, there is a wide uh, 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 a a range of ways to provide the metadata about a data a data file. And we're not going to say that you have to do everything completely differently. If you're used to using a certain type of uh, type of data dictionary. Uh, to tag your data with information about what that data means, perfect. Yeah. That will work as long as it is in a, stru in a structured way. Yeah. We, you can provide the metadata about that metadata, uh, metadata uh, uh, schema uh, using, uh, using a, a, an underlying metadata schema that describes your metadata, the metadata file, which then makes it completely compatible with every other uh, metadata schema uh, that, uh, that, exi that exists. Oop. Right. So uh, now let's have some, uh, some, uh, some, interaction, uh, some interaction. So I would li uh, like to invite you to go to menti.com and, uh, and use, the, uh, use the code there. Uh, uh, so go uh, whip out your 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 uh, cell phones uh, or on your computer uh, to your favorite browser. Uh, type in www.menti.com and then uh, provide the code uh, the code that is uh, that is in there. And now let me have a look. So here we can see what people are filling in. So we know the kind of uh, scripting languages people use because really the, the, the basic principle uh, that we use for, um, uh, for uh, converting this data is scripting, uh, scripting, uh, scripting languages. Scripting languages in order to, uh, to ensure that we can, uh, we can change the data from uh, from one uh, uh, one uh, uh, one form into uh, into another in a way that is uh, that we can check that we can uh, that we can share and that people can check whether what is happening uh, makes uh, makes sense. So while people are still filling in, I'd like to uh, uh, like to move uh, move on to your. Uh, you can move on to your next uh, the next uh, next quest uh, the next question.
So, okay. Oh, no, look, this is not it. So let's uh, let's have a look, do a quick example. Uh, we um, do a quick example for what we um, what we uh, what we can uh, what we can uh, what we can do. So um, uh, I uh, I, pers I I personally really like to use uh, use ga uh, use GAMS. Uh, that is my uh, my, my, uh, my, uh, yep. Right. You sure? Yeah, yeah, you sure? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, I use GAMS. Why? Because it is uh, it uh, um, the data is really well structured. Uh, so you can have the the kind of classifications, and it's really easy to to uh, to use the mapping of cl of different classifications. Um, however, uh, for converting data, uh, GAMS is not really that uh, that uh, that you uh, that useful. So what uh, what I use there. Is uh, is OC. OC is a really old-fashioned uh, scripting language. Uh, dates back to to the 1970s, uh, but it is so powerful. It is so fast, and it's so easy uh, so easy to use. Um, so let me give you an example of um, uh, of some OC code uh, that we uh, that we use for. Um, uh, for converting uh, converting uh, uh, the FAO data uh, data sets uh, uh, into um, uh, into a GD, uh, into a GDX uh, file. Actually, this code uh, this code that I'm that I'm showing here on uh, on the screen is uh, is so generic that it will um, it will um, uh, it will convert any type of FAO stat data file into a GDX file and provide you with all the information on um, uh, on the, uh, the the classifications that are being used in that uh, in that uh, in that in that data uh, in that data file. So it becomes relatively easy to uh, to combine it with the information that you can glean from. Uh, the data standards and definitions that I sh uh, I showed you earlier, in order to uh, to identify uh, uh, to tease out that kind of information from uh, uh, fr from the file. So even if it's got multiple things uh, uh, stacked uh, stacked on uh, stacked on top of each other. Uh, which uh, so both uh, the individual uh, uh, elements as well as aggregates, it becomes really easy, uh, re really easy to tease it out uh, because you've converted this into uh, into a GD uh, into a GDX a GAMS data exchange file, uh, and then you can use it within GAMS to uh, to uh, to uh, to, uh, to to convert it into. The form, uh, the forms that you uh, that you want. So um, let me uh, let me sh uh, let me share uh, uh, share my uh, share my screen with you uh, with a different one here. Uh, yep. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Right. 
So what, uh, what you see here is um, a, uh, a file which, uh, after you've, com uh, you've converted the data, to turn it into, into a GDX file. And uh, actually, there's another little step in, be uh, in between, uh, in between uh, which, uh, uh, which cleans up uh, some things. Um, uh, then uh, you want to make the kind of mappings. Now, the mappings, that is something which is actually um, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of hard work, uh, and this is where it, it really makes sense to do this uh, uh, as a group. Because yeah, you know, if you do it alone, uh, then you're uh, uh, you're you're probably reinventing the wheel that somebody else has al has already uh, has already done. So let me give you an example of uh, of these kind of um, these kind of mappings. So first of all. I have here a, uh, a, a set of, uh, of codes and, um, and, uh, and the related nutrients, um, uh, the dietary, for the dietary composition uh, that I'm interested in for, uh, for, for, my, for, my, anal uh, for my analysis. Uh, um, uh, so uh, I can then uh, make a mapping uh, between those, uh, between those food, I, uh, the, those food, I, uh, the, the, uh, those uh, nutrient items, and the uh, the codes of the nutrient items in um, uh, in the uh, the USDA da uh, database. Uh, uh, just uh, you can uh, you 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 just have to assume that uh, that this is the, the those are those codes that are uh, that are that are there. I can show can show you all all the things, but that would take a lot of time to uh, to do that. Um, what I, uh, another thing is is that we have the kind of the food the food I, the food items that we uh, that are in uh, in the FAO database and the food items that are in the USDA database. Again, we have to make a mapping, and this is a many-to-many -many mapping uh, between um, uh, the ele uh, the elements uh, here on the left uh, on the on the left uh, in the left column. Uh, uh, which are the uh, the FAO codes for uh, for the items in the food balance sheets, and on uh, on the uh, on the right uh, on the right side we see the all the different uh, elements that uh, that are linked to uh, uh, that are linked to the USDA da database. Uh, so, for instance, for almonds, it's fairly uh, fairly easy because there is just uh, there is one uh, one code there for uh, uh, within the FAO uh, food balance sheets, as well as only uh, and one uh, specific code for the nuts and almonds uh, in um, in the uh, USDA uh, uh, database. There is lots of things which contain almonds uh, and specific uh, um, uh, fruit bars with almonds, etc. But we disregard them. We just look at the um, the basic, uh, uh, the basic, uh, the basic food, uh, the, the basic food stuffs. Uh, for apples, it's a bit of a different thing because there's in the USDA uh, database there's lots of different, uh, different, uh, different apples. Uh, uh, and the same, uh, the same holds true for, for instance, beans. There's lots of different uh, be uh, beans. Uh, that uh, that uh, that fall within the category uh, the category of, be uh, of beans. We have these many to many mappings, which we can then use in order to um, uh, to um, to derive uh, an aver the average uh, the average uh, the average nutrient component. Very often, it isn't going to make a lot of a, a lot of difference, and uh, uh, it does lead to uh, to. Uh, to results that we can uh, that we can uh, that we can use. So let me go back to uh, uh, yeah to to the question that I wanted to want to end with, uh, with. You know, as I said before, um, slaving away at this on your own. Um, yeah, that makes the makes the uh, the data use uh, the 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 data useful for you, but 
actually, it's a lot of work and a lot of people will be doing it. So wouldn't it be, be better if we slaved at it together uh, in order to make the, the, that data use, uh, that useful in ways that are generic um, uh, so that it can be used over and over again, that it's in open source so that everyone can, uh, can, can access it in order to make those uh, uh, make the data interoperable and usable for these kind of uh, situations where you really need to have, uh, have the, that, that data at your fingertips uh, really, really quickly. So that is the, the question that we uh, want. Uh, so, So let's go to uh, to to this other uh, this next uh, menti uh, uh, question to see what uh, whether you think that we should be uh, should be doing this. Oh, it looks like there is a quite a few. There is a number of people uh, who think that we can uh, we can get this done. Um, if we can get this done with everyone's help and support, that means we have to get ourselves uh, get ourselves uh, organized. And that is basically where I want to end my um, my uh, my present my presentation uh, in order to see what. Uh, uh, what we can, uh, what we can, uh, what we can do to get, uh, to do together. So, um, are there any questions right now? I can see that. I can see your question. I can see your question, uh, questions in the chat. If you have any, uh, uh, any, uh, any questions on this. No questions. Okay. Th oh, thank you, uh, Rachel. Yeah. Okay. Um, we uh, uh, the mapping the uh, the mappings. Uh, how are we documenting the mapping of the data sets uh, to shared uh, to shared co uh, concepts? Um, okay, so uh, there is two ways that we're uh, that we're doc uh, that we're documenting this. One is um, uh, just uh, uh, a documentation, which is uh, useful for people to read and to see what we have uh, what we have done, including uh, the kind of a mapping uh, mappings. Uh, uh, tables with the mappings in order that people can uh, can see what the mappings are and uh, and identify if there uh, if there are any mis uh, any mistakes. Um, documenting the mappings in a, uh, in a way that is uh, uh, that it can be then be uh, uh, used so that it's machine readable is in. Um, is basically in um, in a uh, um, a multi uh, in in the form of a multi-dimensional uh, uh, mapping, like the one that I show uh, showed earlier between uh, between the food commodities between uh, the the almonds uh, in the FAO and the almonds in the uh, in uh, in the USDA database that. That kind of a, a mapping, which was there in the form of the kind of a code, 
that exactly that part of it we uh, we also uh, put into a uh, into a file uh, uh, which basically has uh, has the map uh, the the uh, the mapping and the description of the separate elements as well as um, if there is in uh, in the la in the last column if there is in uh, uh, if there is a, an ontology uh, term uh, uh, attached to it, and um, the uh, 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 the kind of quality which is uh, in there, and so there is a whole uh, so whether it's uh, it's a uh, one to many or a many to one uh, kind of mapping, etc. So we can you can provide all kinds of information there, um, uh, uh, descriptive uh, and technical um, uh, and structural metadata on the way that the mapping ha uh, that mapping has been done. And again, we can use our uh, our metadata schema uh, to uh, to to describe that. Right. Okay, um, Delapo. Um, Yeah, how can you aggregate data from different sources while ensuring quality? Um, uh, uh, ensuring quality uh, ensuring quality is always uh, an issue because it's it uh, it is about um, uh, the the, uh, the the weakest link. And so, if you have data in there uh, uh, on the one hand, which is really high quality, and then something which is really low quality, and you uh, and you put that uh, you put uh, you put that together, you can get uh, you can have uh, you can have a problem. But there again, uh, it is about providing the kind of rich metadata with your uh, with the data that you combine uh, that you combine where you. Provide the information on uh, on the uh, on the quality because sometimes it uh, for for some intents and purposes um, you can combine um, you know mediocre level data with high quality data um, uh, in in some instances it doesn't really matter while in other uh, uh, in other uh, uh, cases it's uh, it's uh, uh, of crucial importance that the uh, the data is of a certain uh, certain level uh, level of quality okay um, abir should i learn scripting language to work well with data um, yeah, actually, I think it is a really good idea to learn uh, to learn uh, to learn uh, to learn uh, to learn scripting la uh, 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 scripting language, um, and especially you know once you've learned a scripting language, uh, then usually uh, learning your second scripting language is relative relatively uh, relatively easy. Yeah, um, uh, Habib Habiboudin. Uh, what all other than hackathons can help in this process? Okay, the hackathons that we're thinking about is not a, a, a physical one where everybody gets uh, together, but more a virtual uh, hackathon where um, uh, where we set up the the, uh, the process and work together uh, remotely on uh, on different uh, different aspects, um, and also uh, to provide. Support Support uh, in that process from uh, from peer uh, from peers. Um, yeah. uh, is Python losing its charm? No, absolutely. Python is is, is a language is is a language. It's widely used and it's really powerful, but. Um, uh, for uh, for uh, for me, um, I can do stuff uh, with GAMS and AUK. That combination, I can do everything and way better and way more efficiently than I can do uh, than I can do in Python uh, for for the things that uh, that I'm using uh, using it for. So um, that's why I don't uh, I don't use Python. I can read I can read Py uh, Python. I can code in Python. But I don't use Python very, uh, very often. But that doesn't isn't to say that you know uh, somebody else says oh, I'm going to do this in Python. I'm, that's perfectly all right, as long as the the you know the the final the the final results uh, are the uh, are the same, right? 
so you get it into uh, into a uh, uh, into a format that works for for everyone. Uh, hi, Meta. Uh, standards such as controlled vocabularies and ontologies. Um, yeah. Let's see. Agenda to keep this mass up growing. Oh yeah. Oh uh, no, that was an answer to your earlier uh, earlier question. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm reading. I'm reading. I'm reading the questions off my uh, off my uh, off my uh, off my phone. So let's have a look. Um, uh, Faith, uh, how can low quality data be used to augment high quality data and still get high accuracy? Again, li like I said before, that really de uh, depends. Okay. Um, the whole discussion about how, uh, uh, what kind of language uh, you would uh, would want to uh, want uh, want to use. That's really open. Um, one thing that I uh, what I do what I can say is that I use R a lot for uh, for uh, for st uh, for for statistical uh, analysis and for data analysis and uh, uh, machine learning applications. Um, but uh, I always use uh, my combination of GAMS and OC uh, to prepare uh, to prepare the uh, to prepare the data and uh, to get it into uh, to get it into the R, uh, into the R script. Um, perhaps some of you were in the um, uh, in the session yesterday where Robert Hyman's was explaining the. Uh, the cool stuff they were doing with uh, with uh, with uh, with R on uh, on combining data uh, from uh, from Guardian, um, and that they build R scripts for uh, every for every uh, every single data set in order to extract uh, to extract the data uh, because everything was uh, was so uh, so different. Um, so you get a whole bunch of different R uh, R scripts for every single data uh, data set. Uh, that is the problem. The problem uh, between quotes of R that it doesn't allow something which I think is really, really important is the separation of uh, of your code, uh, your data, and um, and the the switches which uh, which link your data to your uh, to your code. So in R, the switches um, and the co uh, and the uh, and the generic uh, the the code itself, which does things, are uh, are intertwined. Uh, they they're, they're not uh, separated. Um, there are ways to do it, but it's extremely tedious. Um, and so for me, it's uh, the way that I do it is I basically um, write generic uh, generic code in GAMS and OCK, um, which uh, which uh, which can read um, a, a file containing all my switches, uh, and then um, my code write, writes our code that contains all that information. So I I have. Uh, just like Robert, I have um, uh, uh, sp uh, specific R codes to R code for each file, but it's been written by the code itself. It's a, it's a machine that wrote the code, not a person. Um, so I'm going to start uh, set up a, um, a, a a group in the meetups where we can continue this discussion because we really need to start he uh, start heading out to our next sessions. Okay, bye-bye everyone, see you around.